Trading Nut, episode 91. A big part of my trading success that I think is absolutely huge that everybody should consider doing is removing what's subjective. And what I consider subjective is something like a trend line, things like that, something that could be misplaced by a human. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax, learn the process. Candlestick pattern training is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. Before we start, I'd like to thank our sponsored partner for today's episode, City Traders Imperium. Now, CTI has one of the world's best funded accounts and learning platforms all in one. Get a CTI Forex funded account today and advance a step closer to achieving your personal freedom. To find out more, head over to citytradersimperium.com. That's citytradersimperium.com. What's up, traders? Welcome to another installment of the Trading Nut Podcast. I'm your host, Cam Hawkins, and today we've got Austin from Imperial FX on the show. Now, Austin's a young trader over there in Florida. He trades, he day trades the US 30 Dow, um, started off in Bitcoin, started off in crypto, did really well, and you're going to hear how he did that. He's an immigrant into America. Uh, he's got a different mindset than a lot of us uh, nine to five folks out there really wanted to not go the nine to five route, and that's why he's sitting there doing this interview with his Lambo and McLaren sitting behind him. And you're going to see that in the video that we shoot, where he actually walks you through the full trade setup that he takes on a daily basis. Okay, so you're going to learn how he does that as well over there on the Trading Nut YouTube channel, or just go to tradingnut.com and find Austin there, and you're going to find his little uh, little clip that we shot after this interview. Now. Other couple of things on the Trading Nut channel. So one is I'm thinking of running a trading comp, uh, yeah, trading competition. So this is literally you guys starting off with, I suppose either a demo account or a live account, probably a live account, um, and we're going to run a competition to see who can grow it by the most uh, percent in a certain amount of time. So I don't know about all the details yet, but if you are interested, head over there to the Telegram chat, let me know, or send me a message and say, hey, look, I'm keen for that. Uh, I'll try and line up some cool prizes for you guys as well, so to make it you know, worthwhile to take part. So folks, that is um, the main thing I'm going to leave you with today. The other thing is I've got some fantastic offers on my Robot Builders Club do be sure to check it out. There's a free training if you've never done building robots before. If you've got no idea about how I do what I do, then head over there, tradingnut.com, click on the robots in the top nav or on the side, and there's a free training that I've got there. And I'll show you actually how I build a trading robot, and you guys get access to a free robot of mine as well, which is currently it's done 50% on the account in probably about six months. So guys, go and check that out over there on tradingnut.com after the show. Right, let's get on with it. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Austin from Imperial FX with us here today. Now, Austin was recommended to me by actually a past guest who um, you may have heard by the time this goes live. His name's Khaled. He's been on the show. Uh, he said, you've got to get this guy on. He's a fantastic trader, a fantastic guy. So welcome to the show, Austin. How um, how are things over there in my, uh, Miami, Florida? I think it's Miami, isn't it? Thank you, man. Happy to be here. No, I'm actually on the other coast of Florida, so I'm in southwest Florida, uh, directly across the state, and um, things are pretty good. It's warm, it's wet, uh, typical Florida summer, a lot of rain. Um, but besides that, man, everything's good. I can't complain, thank God. Cool, cool. And avoiding the, any sort of hurricanes coming through and stuff for the time yeah. being. Yeah, yeah, trying to avoid those as much as possible. Those are always uh, a bit intimidating. But we get a nice heads up, so we could always plan ahead for those. Cool. Well, look, we're going to start off by getting into your your story like how did you get into trading how did it all start and how did you progress to uh, where you are now and we want to go right into the detail here because I think this is where guys get a lot of value from finding out like how did people sort of navigate their way and the struggles that they had along the way so yeah start with that sure so um, I actually got into trading when I was around 19 uh, maybe like yeah 19 like I wasn't 20 yet um, but I had always had an interest in stocks um, when I was younger. Um, and I wanted to trade stocks when I was in high school, but I wasn't able to because I wasn't 18. And um, I just didn't meet all of the required 
parameters to be able to open an account. So I just kind of swept that under the rug for a bit and actually got into um, selling sneakers. Um, extremely hardcore. Like this is a um, couple, maybe five, six years ago. And so I became very familiar with the buy low, sell high concept uh, with that sneaker market at the time. And um, basically, I was a bit of a rebel when I was younger. So when I was in high school, um, a bunch of these kids, they all wanted to buy fake IDs. And in order to buy the fake IDs, you had to buy Bitcoin. So at the time, I had no idea what Bitcoin was, um, but I just went ahead and you know had to buy it to you know proceed with this transaction. And I, when I was buying it, I saw that there was a line chart. So I was just like, oh, that's interesting. Um, and like being able to see the historical value, how it changed so much, I was interested in it. Um, so I decided to buy a little bit extra. And Bitcoin at the time was around $200. Um, so I bought Bitcoin at $200, and I just started kind of following it as time went on. Um, and then as I had no idea what I was doing, absolutely no clue at all. So I just started learning like the basics of price action, just how I could understand what it was that I was looking at on the screen in front of me, um, with a very basic line chart. And, um, I started learning a bit and then sooner or later, Bitcoin exploded, uh, as we all know, went up to 20,000. And, um, that was actually how I made my first, uh, good amount of money in any financial market was off Bitcoin and Ripple. So I bought Bitcoin when it was like two hundred and forty-two dollars, and I bought Ripple when it was three cents. Um, and to me, I was I was young, I was nineteen, so I was just like, "Yo, this is perfect!" Um, like I love this crypto stuff. I'm gonna do this forever, right? That's what everybody thought at the time, you know. Um, that didn't really know what was going on, and um, we all know how that ended. So that kind of went down the shitter. Um, everything went. I mean, lost probably I would say eighty percent of its value. Um, during that whole crash and I was just like okay well this is going down um, there's really uh, no opportunity for me here right now what else can I apply this knowledge that I've learned you know with the very basic technical analysis that I had um, to in the meantime so that's how I stumbled across the currency market and um, I actually stumbled across the currency market from people that I was just following on Instagram um, that were trading and this is around uh, three and a half years ago and uh, almost four so I got into it um, and I never looked back. So I funded an account right away, didn't do a demo at all, just uh, put a couple thousand dollars in there. I actually tripled that account in five days, and then on the fifth day, I lost the entire account. Um, and then I was just like, well, okay, what's next? So then I just decided, let's try this again. Uh, I reloaded the account with some more money, and then I just kept going, and I never looked back from there. Um, sought out as much knowledge as I could uh, with the internet, and... Um, yeah, you know, pretty much just had to sort through a lot of things, and it was a lot of a uh, trial by fire. Uh, but in the end, it all worked out, and here I am today. And so, so with that Bitcoin like run up to twenty thousand, I mean, <clears throat> did you sell at any point or or get out yeah, at any so point? Yeah, I pulled out a good amount when it hit five hundred dollars. Right. Uh, yeah, when it hit five hundred dollars. But the one that I did not pull out it was Ripple. Right. So I, I had Ripple at three cents, and that ran all the way up to three dollars and thirty one cents. Wow. So that was that was a good break for sure. So did that and then I, I bought it along the way. As things started going up, I started buying more Bitcoin um in you know different altcoins at the time um along the way. But you know, that was pretty much it for the most part. I didn't really know what I was doing at all. I like to think that I knew what I was doing. Um but now like in retrospect I really didn't have that much trading and investing experience. Everything that I knew was just I pretty much just had that buy low, sell high um mindset from you know, just selling sneakers and selling different things at the time, um, you know, in the in the real world. But yeah, that's pretty much how I got into everything. And crypto, my big break was definitely on Ripple, not Bitcoin. Okay. And so, so um, the uh, the two thousand to six thousand uh, triple account three days, then losing it all. I mean, yeah. what what were you doing? Because he sort of said that okay, I then refunded the account and. From there, I haven't looked back. I mean, what what stuff from the simple technical analysis you were doing back in Bitcoin days to what you were yeah. doing then? What changed? So, oh well, basically from from like what changed till now, or what changed from like at that time period where I blew the account? Uh, when, when you blew the account, so I mean, you, you'd blown the account versus like you said, you loaded some more money in the account. So you obviously yeah. either was doing the same thing with just better mindset or um, better yeah, money management so- or something like that. Okay, yeah. So basically how I was approaching that account at the time was pretty much all trend lines and this indicator that I had bought from this guy uh, when I was when I had Bitcoin because I was actually trading Bitcoin um, at one time or attempting to trade Bitcoin. 
at one time uh, with this indicator. And it was just like one of those indicators that would just like plop like a buy or like a sell on uh, on your chart at the time. I'm sure we've all seen those um, pretty much just like a high low marker. And I would use that on like three and 13 minute time frames, And it made absolutely no sense. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it made zero sense. I had no idea what was going on. Um, I was just dropping like one lots on like a $2,000 account and it was just working. I was just like, okay, like I'm up $500. So I'm going to close this. And like, that's just, that was my mindset. Um, and then like something happened. I think it was like something that had to do with ECB and, um, it might've even been an interest rate decision. And I just watched my position just completely blow the account. And I was just like, oh my God, like what just happened? Like they, everything just went from one price to a much higher price very quickly. And I was extremely overwhelmed and I had no idea what was happening. So I was like, all right, let's take a step back. So then that's when I started just looking for more knowledge, uh, more resources on the internet that I could learn from, what to do after you suffered um, you know, a loss like that. And then I was just like, all right, let's just slow things down a bit. Um, so I dropped my order size significantly and then just kind of altered my approach from there. Um, and pretty much just took it the way up from there. And obviously, um, there was a lot of ups and downs with that, mainly downs in the beginning. Um, but after, you know, seeking uh, like a, a lot of knowledge, I, I probably have bought maybe like 15 courses um, throughout the, the time period that I've been trading. And I would just take bits and pieces from certain ones and develop the system that actually worked. Um, but along that time period, there were points where I would, you know, double, triple the account, and then I would lose a good majority of it. And then it would just, you know, keep going back up. Um, and eventually, as things got smooth and consistent, that's when I was comfortable loading more money into the accounts and um, growing them from there. Cool, cool, great. Yeah. Well, so, um, so I mean, you did, did a whole bunch of courses, right? So how were you sort of selecting things from those courses that you thought were worthwhile adding to your arsenal? Um, so pretty much I just got started with people that I was familiar with, people that I was following at the time. Um, you know, just just like we were talking about before we hopped on the show, um, just, you know, you see people making money and you're like, okay, this guy must be doing something that works. So then I would, I would buy into that. Um, I think that's a mistake that a lot of new traders do is they see somebody posting profit shots on Instagram and they think that this guy has the secret sauce to trading and then they buy a program that they have. And then they try to duplicate those, uh, the same thing that they saw on somebody's Instagram story. And often uh, they usually don't achieve the same outcome. And that's pretty much what happened to me for a while until I was able to piece together something that actually did work for me. And, and can you sort of give us like a, at a high level what, what that looks like at the moment? Uh, what works for me now? Yeah. So ma- mainly now I would say a lot of my trading is based off of key levels. Um, key levels are always something that I was aware of um, something that I incorporated into my trading, but I definitely didn't put as much emphasis um, on them that I do now. So I mainly trade US 30. That's it. Um, I trade for three hours a day and I'm done. Um, I have a set time period and I'm pretty much just looking for a price to break into a new range. And then I look for different confluences that add up um, on certain levels. And I'm I'm sure we're going to hop on a screen share um, later on and I could show you what that looks like. But basically I'm looking for a bunch of confluences in a certain area that's usually always going to be comprised of a key level, a moving average, um, and, or a fib retracement level, a specific fib retracement level. Um, a big part of my trading success that I think is absolutely huge that everybody should consider doing is removing what's subjective. Um, and what I consider subjective is something like a trend line, um, things like that, something that could be misplaced by a human. Um, you can't really argue that certain key levels are valid or invalid because you can, you can see it. You, know, it's, you can obviously tell that a level is real or not. Um, a trend line can be easily fabricated because your, your eyes want it to be there and it's actually not there. Um, so removing what's subjective really helped me a lot. So moving averages and key levels um, for sure definitely are the, a main uh, aspect of my trading today for sure. And it sounds simple um, because it really is. I always tell people trading is very simple, but it's not very easy. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my approach. It's, it's honestly kind of funny. Someone will come to my office cause we have a trading floor here in Florida. Um, we opened it earlier this year and someone that's never been here will come in they'll see my screens and they'll say like, well, Hey man, what is all this? How does all this work? I'm like, basically when the price hits the yellow line, I hit sell. And they're just like, Oh, that sounds easy enough. And I'm just like, yeah, not quite. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's, that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, man. It's just all, it's all key levels, moving averages. Um, I use VWAP as well. Um, and I have the volume indicator on, but I mean, volume is just something I like to watch um, just to kind of know what's going on in a certain time of day. But yeah, I would say mainly key levels, um, Fibonacci retracement and moving averages are um, 
my strategy as a whole. And I, I've tried so many different things, man. Um, but I found that this works for me best, especially with it, with what I trade. Um, it's very responsive and very reactive. And so, so I mean, what, what I find quite interesting is if you could sort of walk through for the listeners out there, how you ended up landing on this particular combination, because I think that's, that's really sort of where people are at uh, in this journey. They're all sort of like, I've got so much information. Now I need to be able to piece it together into something that's going to work for me. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, man, I tried pretty much everything. I've tried, you know, RSI, MACD, um, MA crossovers, all of these different things um, that people keep hearing about that are, it's probably going to be, you know, filling up most of the courses that people buy. Um, I've tried all that stuff. I've tried structure. I've tried just patterns. Um, and what I found is I, I eventually came to the point where I was following the strategy that made sense. And It wasn't necessarily the most successful strategy for me, but it made sense and I understood it. Um, And then I basically just had to remove certain elements that didn't work for me and did not work for me um, and then just kind of piece them together and come to that conclusion. So for me, I was very, very fundamental driven. Um, I used to study fundamentals like it was no tomorrow. I was basically like an economist. I was just sitting here all day just reading, 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 and then I would just wait for something to hit a technical spot on my chart and then I would enter. Um, Now, that worked for me when I didn't have an office uh, because I didn't really, it wasn't very demanding of me. It didn't really demand demand much screen time. Uh, When I opened our office, I found that I had so much more time on my hands sitting in front of the charts. And that's when I found a lot of flaws in my system that just didn't align with who I was as a person. And I think that's a super important thing with trading is that your system should reflect your personality. Um, Because if you're someone that's very hyper and that needs to have a lot of action going on, swing trading is going to drive you nuts. Um, so, and if you're someone that's very patient and calm, day trading is going to overwhelm you. So for me, I'm, I'm very, very, uh, intense. I, I like to have a lot of things going on. I like to be heavily involved in something. I'm, I'm not very lackadaisical. Um, so I would sit here and I would stare at these charts and I would just be like, okay, like, why does this keep failing? And say that was a trend line, for example. I'll be like, oh, because it wasn't angled the right way. And then I'll just be like, okay, well, now I know next time to, you know, line it up from the wick to wick rather than from the body to the body or something like that. But then once you start to realize that wicks are subjective based on different broker charts that you're looking at, you're like, wait a minute, there's like, there's a flaw in the system. So that's when I started removing things that were subjective. And then I would just rely on just key levels. And then I paired that with Fibonacci because I, I place huge emphasis on uh, Fibonacci. So I saw that like lining up perfectly. I was like, okay, well, when the key level and the fib line up, then I'm going to get a super high probability setup. So I'm going to keep acting on this. Um, And then I would basically just build on that. And then I would add different things in there that I had known about before. Um, So that was a huge help. But I would be lying if I said that I came up with all of this on my own because I really did have a great group of individuals um, that I used to talk to every single day for hours and hours on end. And uh, we would just test different things together and we'd figure out different things and research a lot. And we were able to, you know, come to certain conclusions that really, really helped things um, kind of all piece together. So I definitely am grateful for being able to be exposed to people that were kind of on the same point that I was. Uh, We were all pretty frustrated with the same challenges that a lot of people face. And we're like, okay, well, what can we do to fix this? What can we do differently? And then we were able to piece it out. Um, and I'm not saying that we were in that group as total beginners and had nothing going on. Um, I was profitable at the time and we all were, but we all just want, we all knew that there was something missing or something that we were do, we were putting too much emphasis on that didn't deserve the emphasis. Um, and then we were able to build on it from there. Nice. Brilliant. Well, look, uh, what, what a about lot of trial and, error and a lot of trial and error. Yeah. It sounds like, I mean, how many hours would you say you, you would have given to it? Man, that's a hard question because when I was really, really going like crazy, 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 uh, I would say about a year ago, I, it was a hundred hours a week. I would sit in front of the chart and not even trade. It was, I would just watch. I would just sit there and I would watch. And I would, this is when I was really getting into fundamentals. I would just wait for headlines to pop out and then I'd watch the chart and see how it reacted. And I would just do that nonstop and just try to see what headlines move the market. And then I would kind of understand the trend fundamentally as to what was significant and what wasn't. Um, But if I had to say total hours, I mean, I'd say I'm probably approaching that 10,000 hour mark. Um, Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like like it. A lot of time. (laughs) A lot of time, man. I've definitely fried my eyes in front of the screen multiple nights. I mean, I've passed out in my office chair 
so many times and just woke up like at four in the morning and I was like, oh man, I'm still here. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I got to get up and go. Because one of my really good friends is, is from Canada and um, one of my trader friends, we, had, we met through trading at a, a course down or a seminar down in uh, Florida. And when he went back, we, we just stayed in touch. So we would Zoom all the time and we would just be on Zoom and we'd be on the charts and we used to mainly trade GBP pairs. So we were um, awake later at night and we traded like GJ a lot. So we needed to be awake during the, the Tokyo session and London session. So we would just be on this Zoom call. It was like a 24-hour Zoom call. It never ended, I swear. We would just sit on there and we would just talk to each other and just like same thing like I told you, watch the headlines come out, see how it was affecting certain pairs. And um, I mean, we, we'd pass out on the Zoom call all the time. <laughs> I'm brilliant. Like we, it was like it was almost like keeping watch. You know how like uh, sometimes people like they'll have like night shifts. Yeah, like security yeah. guards will stand in front of like a, a, a like a say like a parliament building or something, and they'll they'll take turns. That's pretty much what it was like. We would pass out for a couple hours. One person would watch, and then we'd switch. And if something would happen, we'd be like, "Oh, wake up, wake up, wake up!" And then we'd tell them to to, to get on the charts. So yeah, man, we did a lot of a lot of interesting stuff, and definitely pushed ourselves um, physically and mentally to be able to reach certain conclusions that we've reached it definitely wasn't easy now i'm going to sort of pry a little bit here into your uh, yeah. what was going on personally with you at the time like i mean were you what age were you and did you have a job how were you surviving were you, you know living at home with parents or how did that look yeah so i mean i was 21 just turned 21 at the time and um this was mainly just i mean i had money from crypto um so that, that was like a big thing for me that gave me the freedom to really be able to explore all these different strategies is that I wasn't like dying, you know what I mean? I had I had money. Um, I've always been a hustler my entire life. Um, I went through certain things when I was younger that pretty much forced me um, to make money. Um, and I was able to have that cushion. And then as well as when I was trading crypto or when I invested in crypto, I don't want to say trading because when I traded crypto, it didn't go very well. But when I invested in, um, in XRP and was able to make a good amount of money off of it, I was able to have that freedom to kind of figure out um, you know, what was right and wrong. I didn't go to college at all. Um, I knew it wasn't for me, uh, just from a young age. I'm, I'm very defiant towards authority. Um, so for me, I was just like, I never want to work for anybody. Why would I want to go to a school and listen to this guy tell me how to do something that he's never even done? So I was just like, that doesn't make sense. So I just, I didn't go to school. And then I was like, all right, well, I got to figure it out. Um, and I mean, I tried a bunch of different things, man. I did music management for a while. Um, a bunch of different things. I had a clothing brand. I always kind of had something going on on the side that was, uh, you know, going to pay me while I was researching this because I knew it was going to take time. Um, but in the end of the day, like I wasn't, if I didn't trade, it's not like I was going to, you know, die or like starve or anything like that because I, I was able to be fortunate enough to capitalize on crypto when it exploded. That was definitely a huge break for me. And so, so this uh, trading the US 30, I mean, how, how much, how many trades are you taking in a day? And how long are those trades running for? Yeah, so I take one trade a day, uh, if that, sometimes. So that's my rule. One trade a day, win or loss, that's it. Um, and pretty much how it works is I'm in a, a position from 9.45, or not always, but my session begins at 9.45 a.m. Um, and then I'm pretty much done by 12. Sometimes I'll stay a little bit longer. depends how the action is. Um, but yeah, I'll take a position, and then if it's going well, it's usually going to last me anywhere from like, I would say 30 minutes to three hours. Um, and if it does go beyond that, I'll typically just, I'll leave the office and then I'll, I'll monitor it throughout the day um, with my, with, while I'm trailing my stop loss. Um, that's pretty much how it works for me. Uh, I just found that this is just something that works for me really, really well. I didn't used to only trade us 30. I actually thought you trading us 30 was really stupid um, a couple of years ago, just because I didn't really understand it at all. Um, and I just saw everybody trading it like based off of what they saw on Instagram. So I just thought like it was like a sheepish thing to do. Like it's like nobody understands this. Like why are you trading it just because you saw some other guy do it? Um, I thought that was dumb. And then when everything started going crazy with the, the coronavirus, I started paying more attention to it. And then I just I got into it a bit more. And then I was like, huh, OK. So like I just started devoting more time to it. And um, yeah, I just I never looked back really since then. And I was also like, I think a trading journal is a super important thing. Everybody here is like, here's that saying, keep a trading journal, but I think very few traders actually do it. Um, and I was like very, very big on this. So I was journaling all my trades and I looked back one day just to like, kind of do like a recap of everything. And I noticed that all the trades I was taking on us 30, I had an extremely high win rate. I had like a 93% win rate. 
on US 30 out of like 37 trades. So I was just like, okay, you know, like this is working for me. Um, and like a big saying that stuck with me, I forgot where I heard it. Um, I think it was in Hedge Fund Market Wizards. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with that book by Jack Schwager. Um, and it was a guy and he basically said, do more of what works and less of what doesn't. And it's like, that's super straightforward. But when you think about it, you're like, okay, yeah, obviously. So I was like, all right, well, let's see what's working. Let's see what's not working. I had all this data in my journal. So I was like, US 30 is working for me. It would be stupid of me to not pay attention to this. So I started paying attention to it. And then I just kind of fell in love with it and then never looked back from there. Nice, nice, nice. And and uh, so you, that was a massively high winning rate. Uh, what about the risk to reward ratio? I mean, was it one to one or more than that? No, typically one to three. Wow, that is crazy. Yeah, one, one to three, sometimes a lot more. Most of my trades nowadays like have a run a fifty pip stop loss, but before it was a uh, like a, a hundred pip stop loss, like a hard stop of a hundred, and I would manually intervene if I saw things, um, you know, not really playing out how I wanted to. But yeah, usually always one to three. Like for example, today uh, I called a trade. I went short at 28,000 um, on US 30. My stop loss was uh, 28,050, and my take profit was 27,700. So I risked 50 pips to make 300. And if there was one thing you could sort of. That, 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 Sorry, say that again. Three hours. That hour. trade out all the way. So it was um, from 28,000, exit was 27,700, and my stop was 28,050, and that took three hours to play out. So 100 pips an hour. Wow. Wow. Uh, if there was one thing you could sort of tell the guys that was, um, I suppose, unique to US 30 to help them get a better get a better feel for it, what would it be? That it's not a currency pair, so don't approach it like one. Um, it has its own hours. You need to understand that it's an equity index. So the time that you're going to have your volume, the time that it's actually going to make sense to trade is while, is during the US trading session. So I always let the first 15 minutes of the session pass. Um, and when I say the U S trading session, I'm not talking about eight to four, eight to five. I'm talking about from nine 30 to four, um, because that's when the stock market's open. So I always let the first 15 minutes of the open pass just in case there's any noise there. Um, and then I'll tackle from nine, uh, nine 45 to around noon. And that's when I notice volume kind of starts to drop off. So I would say, make sure that you're trading it in a time where there's high volume, which is usually going to be those first three hours in the morning that I trade. And then typically in like the last hour and a half before the market closes is when, is, uh, when you're going to get a lot of movement as well. So only trade when there's volume, trade when there's action, um, and understand that this is going to, it's going to just totally move off of different variables. Um, it's not going to move off of things like a currency pair are going to move off of. Interest rates obviously are going to play a role in it because it's, you know, it's a U.S. equity index. Um, but you just need to be aware of what's going on in the equity markets for sure. Cool, cool. Well, I mean, you had a, you, I suppose you had a quite a different life than many. You know, you didn't want to go down the normal route. I mean, what no. do you think made you different from everyone else out there? What, what, why uh, do you think you ma- managed to get this right, whereas so many struggle? My upbringing. So my dad's an immigrant. My dad uh, came to the U.S. from Lebanon. Um, he jumped around the world a bit until he came to the U.S. But he came here, and I mean, he he has a true come from nothing story. My dad lived the American dream. And he taught me when I was a little kid that you just don't need to do the typical route that people are going to tell you in order to, to be successful. You don't need to follow this kind of culture that everybody else is doing to get what you want out of life. If you want something in life, you just have to get after it and go take it. And it's okay if you fail a couple of times because it's not the end of the world. You know, and I, I see that my dad made the ultimate sacrifice. You know, he lost everything that he had um, in a different country and came here and started completely over and like left his whole fate like his it's crazy he has a crazy crazy story um but basically i was just i find it that it'd be a disservice to my parents to not go after what i want to do and take the normal and waste time taking the normal route um so for me i would say that my upbringing definitely um shaped it or sculpted the way that i think because my parents were very very encouraging if i ever wanted to try anything they would always encourage me to try it um they always just told me if you fail just try again you know what's the worst that's going to happen you just keep trying um, so I think that's probably the biggest, um, the biggest factor for sure is the fact that I was just raised with that mindset. My dad definitely just told me, if you want to do something, go ahead and do it. There's, there's no one that could stop you. So just try to figure it out and make it happen. It sounds, sounds a bit like the, or reminds me of, um, it's almost like the Gary V of the trading world. I mean, he came from, from Russia and, um, immigrant family into the U S and, uh, and managed to, to, to become massively successful. I don't know if you've heard, heard of him. 
probably. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. I've, read, I've read a lot of his books. Um, now, what about somebody who is in the opposite situation, the complete sort of reverse? The the parents didn't give them the the advice that you got. They went down the the route of you know nine to five job, uh, and now they're sort of starting to question that and going, "Hang on a sec, I, I want something else." Um, I want to, you know, look at this trading thing and see if I can make it work. What steps would you recommend they take? Um, I would definitely recommend that they educate their mind before they get involved in the markets. Um, and I'm not just saying educate their mind based on market knowledge. I would just say on real world stuff, because when you're going to a job, you're probably going to, you know, just have that notion of security um, that, you know, if you want something, you just show up to work and you get paid and, you know, it is whatever you might not like it, but it is what it is. Uh, I would say, find somebody in your life that's going to be rough on you and just tell you kind of like that tough love mentality. Um, basically find a mentor in, a, in an area that's not trading because you're going to need that mental fortitude to survive in this industry. Um, this environment is extremely unforgiving. So being able to kind of prep your mind and understand that you're going to get knocked down a lot and it's okay. You're not going to die. Like it's going to be okay. That's something that I think a lot of people need to learn because they don't have that. They think they failed at something. They're no good. It's not for them. So then they just give up. You're going to fail a lot in trading. That's just the way it is. And I'm sure you know this, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's definitely prepping your mind to be able to handle such an intense environment is going to be a huge thing. And I would re- definitely recommend um, Andy Frisella to anybody um, that is in search of somebody that's going to kind of uh, tell them, you know, the real world aspects and you know that's not always going to be a a bright sunny day every day you know you're going to have to eat shit until you can actually figure things out and i mean andy has a great podcast um it's not trading related at all but i definitely think everybody should listen to it because it's that definitely shaped a huge uh part of the way i think as well is just understanding that you know shit's not always easy um so that's definitely helpful so once you do that i would say make sure that you have money to survive um i would say keep working your job until you have a bit of a cushion a hundred percent. Um, you, you like, it, it'd be stupid for somebody to take all the money they have, quit their job and trade with it, especially when they have responsibilities. Um, if they're living by themselves, if they have bills to pay, and then like, let's just say somebody only has $20,000, for example. Um, and they're living by themselves. They have a car payment, they have phone, all this rent, utilities, all these different things. And then they start trading and, you know, they have to invest in education and then they start, they lose money. There's a learning curve to it. So if you're not prepared to go through the motions of that learning curve, um, definitely make sure that you have another source of income that's going to be able to support that learning curve because it, it could take longer uh, for you than it could take longer for somebody else. Um, so definitely make sure that you're not going to be, you know, super pressed against the wall because it's going to make it a lot harder of a journey. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing hard things. But it's definitely not convenient when you're stressing out about losing all the money you had and then you have a bunch of bills to pay. Um, so I definitely recommend that people have um, another source of income while they're learning how to trade so that they can actually survive. Um, because once you do, it's going to take that stress off of it and it's going to let you think a bit clearer um, in the markets for sure. Cool. So, I, yeah, I would say prepare your mind um, for something that's going to be very difficult. I would say prepare your wallet and make sure that you're, uh, you have money. Um, coming in from another source so you're not going to be able to, you know, starve and make sure that you can actually uh, survive. And then I would say seek education. Um, seek, seek definitely some kind of mentor or, or person or something that can kind of show you um, the right way how to do things. And not, don't just seek one, seek out a couple. Um, try a bunch of different things because not everybody is going to respond the same way to certain information. Not everybody is wired the same way. Like I was mentioning earlier, um, someone that's super hyperactive isn't going to do well in a swing trading environment. And somebody that's super laid back and patient is going to get overwhelmed by a day trading environment. So try a bunch of different things, find what works for you. And then once you find what works, do more of what works unless it doesn't. And, and thinking about a price chart, I mean, if these guys were jumping on a chart and they're looking, they're hunting around going, okay, where do I start? What, what three things would you recommend they, they focus on on that chart? Um, so assuming they have like some kind of knowledge or assuming they have like, assuming they got some, some sort of knowledge, you know, that they know know, what indicators are and that sort of stuff. Yeah. I would say key levels and fibs. And, and any, any sort of advice here on the fibs? I mean, what, what fibs have you found to work? Cause there's, there's so many different ways to do fibs. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the way I have a strategy that I call the golden fib strategy. So these are my three levels that are my highest probability levels. Um, that's 62%, 71%, and 79%. 
Um, so these are levels that I use, and I actually plot my fibs a certain way. I'm sure it, when, when we hop on the, the charts, I'll show you how I do it. Um, but I actually round up my uh, zero and my 100% points to certain levels. Um, and then basically I will just look for those to line up. So when I see a key level line up with a fib, then I basically, or one of the three fibs that I just mentioned, um, then I basically know I have a higher probability on that setup. So that's something that I'll always look for and I'll always act on. And then moving averages, you could always add those in there as well. Um, moving averages, I approach them just as moving support and resistance. The higher the period of the moving average, um, the stronger it's going to be, in my opinion, as a support and resistance um, obstacle. And yeah, that's, I would just wait for everything to line up and take it from there. And are you just using simple moving averages or anything special yeah, kind simple, of simple, yeah, simple moving sorry. averages? Cool. Yeah, I use a bunch of different periods, um, and I use the view up as well. But I only use the view up for US thirty. I don't use it for anything else, um, just because it's not going to respond the same way as other things will. Other and, things will. Are you on the VWAP? Just sort of a bit of a personal question from me. Are you using um, that on MetaTrader 4 or anything like that, or are you on... No, no, uh, so I do all my analysis on TradingView, and then I execute on um, MT4. Okay, cool, yeah. Because I was going to say, that I was having a look for a VWAP indicator the other day on MT4, yeah, and uh, it doesn't exist, really. Well, uh, exist. yeah, not not the ones that tr on TradingView that you get. Now, um, what about mindset? So do you have any special techniques or tips you can share with us for people to try and get their, their head in the right space for trading. Absolutely. I'm so glad you asked me this question. So, um, yeah, so pretty much how I always approach this is trading is a sport. Um, it 100% is a sport. And uh, it's a mental sport. So with that, you have to keep in mind you need to have mental clarity. So in order for me to – how I achieve that mental clarity is I keep myself busy doing other things. I, I take insane care of my body. Um, I would definitely say follow a specific diet. Um, eat – eat very clean, drink a lot of water, move around, um, you know, do something to disperse all that energy that's in your head and it will help you think a lot clearer just on everything, not just trading. Um, but you want to be clear by the time that you come into that market environment um, so you're able to, you know, to think clearly. Um, before I come to the charts in the morning, I, I ride my bike like 10 miles every morning. Um, and that definitely helps me a lot. I used to not do that. I used to wake up, I had my desk set up in the corner of my bedroom and I would just wake up and go straight to the charts and that's how I would start my day and it was just not good. Um, I mean, I was successful at the time and I was profitable at that time period, but I found that I was way more stressed. Um, I didn't feel good, like just energy level wise. It just, I just didn't feel like healthy. I didn't feel good at all. So once I started separating all of that and establishing uh, trading hours is going to be a huge one. I tell that to a lot of the people um, that are a part of Imperial FX is set trading hours for yourself. Um, and that will basically allow you to separate time for that arena uh, mindset. When you're in the arena, your game face is on. Um, so when I'm in at my desk in the morning and I'm trading, I'm, I'm lasered in. That's what I'm doing at that time period. I'm not really thinking about much else. Um, and it's able to give me that dedicated focus. And then when I'm out of that, I don't really look at charts throughout the day. Um, so dedicating a certain amount of hours uh, to your trading is going to be huge. And when I say dedicating a certain amount of hours to your trading, I don't mean researching and things like that. That's completely separate. When you're actually trading, have a fixed schedule. Um, take care of your body. Take care of your mind with exercise, reading, diet, um, thing, hydration, things like that. And um, I would say that's probably like one of the biggest things that you could do off screen to really, really help um, you know approach the market from a clear perspective. Because if you keep just like overwhelming yourself with information and things like that and you keep staring at a chart all day you're just going to get burnt out you're going to have so many different things going through your head related to the market it's just not going to work well for you um so i definitely wouldn't recommend doing that i used to be the type of person to have bloomberg on my tv 24 7 i'd wake up it was on i'd fall asleep it was on non-stop market information i have twitter notifications on my phone to certain fundamental outlets i actually just got a notification now um and so it's just non-stop info and it's like it's good to educate yourself but when you get to the point where you understand what you're looking for, you don't need to overwhelm yourself with that all the time because you're just you're going to implode. Um, so that's definitely something that I would recommend a lot of people do. For example, uh, one of the people, a good friend of mine, he's involved uh, with Imperial. He's a student of mine, and um, he's doing the FTMO challenge. Uh, he's doing three accounts. And mind you, this guy has not been trading very long at all. Um, but he's doing three accounts at the same time. And he got them all, uh, he passed the, I think it's the challenge phase, the, the first part, he passed that, and then he ended up blowing all the accounts, and then he was like, hey, I'm going to do this again, but he's like, I really need, I need help, like, I overtraded last time, like, 
all this. He's like, I haven't been working out. I haven't been doing any of the stuff. And I just told him basically what I told you. I was like, listen, man, I trade from this time period. If you want to trade with me, we can do that. But this is the time that I'm doing it. After that, I'm not looking at anything else. Um, like make sure you take care of yourself, things like that. And then he started this like eight days ago and he, uh, he passed the, or no, not eight days ago, maybe like, uh, like a week and a half ago. Cause he passed the, uh, the time period. So he's on the next step now to actually getting the money from them mm. to get funded. Um, and he passed all three accounts and he's good. And I'm, I don't think he has much more to go. Um, but he always tells me, he's like, Hey man, like it helped me so much just establishing that time period where I'm actually going to be involved um, with the charts and with the market, because now like, I know like I've taken a loss today or I've, I won today. and I don't feel the need to chase. I don't feel the need to go after more. He's like, I have these rules and that's it. Um, so I would definitely say establishing a, um, a trading session for yourself is huge. Um, that's going to be probably one of the biggest things, especially after a loss too, because I know a lot of people, when they take losses, they try to recover that. And if you stick to your hours and you understand like, okay, boom, we took the loss sessions over. Like you have to like, meant to kind of program in your mind that there's really nothing you could do about it. Physically, yeah, you could go on your phone, you can go on your computer and you could take more trades, but that's not you following your system. When you actually follow your system and have that mindset like, okay, let's just say after 12 p.m. noon, my trading terminal is done, it's closed, there's nothing I can do about it. If you think that that's the truth, I promise your trading is going to increase or your trading performance will increase. It's a great because tip. It is a great tip. I've got to say it's um, something that I've always struggled with myself actually trying to find a, a slot to do it. And yeah. I end up jumping in and out throughout the entire day, um, which, yeah, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's great and sometimes it's terrible. So um, it's a, I think it's something I'm probably going to take on board myself and just so try and a, find a slot. It's combating revenge and greed. Um, that's pretty much what it fights, you know, and it gives you that mental – it gives you that period of mental clarity. Um, so like one, a buddy of mine, the one that I was telling you about, the, the Canadian that I used to be on 24-hour Zoom calls with um, – he actually worked at a hedge fund uh, for a period of time. And the guy that uh, established the fund actually created his own trading software, um, but it was for stocks. And he was telling me about how there was a thing on there. Apparently this is common um, on stock trading platforms. I don't know because I've never used a uh, stock trading platform, but you could actually set a, uh, a limit for how much money you can lose in a day. So these people say they would lose like five grand, for example, the program would not let them trade anymore. Right. Uh, throughout the day and I was just like wow dude I wish we had that you know what yeah. I mean um, and then I was just like well what if I just kind of create it in my head and just pretend that it exists Yeah. you know yeah. what I mean and then, I mean obviously it takes discipline to be able to be able to get to that point um, but I did that and it helped me a lot I mean I have I have a lot of discipline um, I did martial arts when I was a kid and I think that's uh, that's super uh, important it, a very huge aspect of my life it definitely created a lot of uh, my values and discipline that I have to this day um, but yeah, like being able to hold yourself accountable and have discipline is huge. So if you can have the discipline to not trade after certain hours or after exceeding a, a certain loss per day, um, I definitely think that would help. Like one of the things that I cover in my program is setting something called a monthly loss limit. So basically what that is, it's not a mechanical feature at all. It's just something that you actually have to just follow in your head with your own discipline. Um, and it's basically, let's just say, um, 10%. Let's just say you're willing to risk 10% of your balance uh, per month. When you hit that 10% mark, you're done. You don't trade anymore for the month. Um, and that's like that's a huge thing. But you can even break that down to a daily level um, and be like, okay, well, if I lose, like, let's just say 3% today, like, then I'm done. I can't trade anymore. Mm. Uh, when you have those kind of rules in play, it's going to help you a lot um, for sure. It's just, but again, it all comes down to that mental fortitude and that, that strength that you're going to have as an individual, because anybody could say that they're going to do something, but very few people are going to follow their own rules. And then it's just kind of going to be a disaster. So that's where it's like, you have to work on yourself more than your strategy sometimes, because sometimes your strategy is not the problem. Sometimes you are the problem. Um, yeah. and that's, people don't want to take accountability for that. They'll just be like, no, it can't be me. I'm not the problem. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm perfect. So it's just like, once you realize that you're imperfect and that you'll make mistakes, a lot of different things are going to come into play. So I think trading is a lot more than what you're doing on the screen. I think I would say 80% of trading performance comes from what you're doing off the screen and off the charts, 100%. How do you exit and manage active trades? So how do I, how do I manage my trades? Yeah. 
Okay, so what I've been doing recently, this is a newer thing. Um, I so before I just used to trail stops. Um, I would just set different take profit levels, and I would I would trail stops, or I would just exit fully at a certain um, pip gain or loss. Like you know, that was pretty much my thing. Before it was like 100 pips profit, boom, I'm gonna close it, or like 100 pips, I'll take a percentage out and then just trail the rest. Um, what I've been doing recently, and I found with great success, is um, what I'll do is say like um, I'm entering a trade with, let's just say let's just say five lots, for example, okay? Say I'm taking a trade of five lots. Um, I'll actually add like two more lots on top of that. So now I'm entering with seven lots. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is because by adding on that extra two lots, I'm only assuming like a greater risk by like very little, let's just say like 1% or like one and a half percent or even half a percent. Um, but when that trade runs to my first take profit, I'll take out my five lots, okay? So I'll pull that out. And then I'll leave that ex- like that extra or bonus lots, I like to call it, um, on top of the position with my stop loss at break even. Um, and then what that's going to do, it's going to allow me to capture a much larger move, essentially risk-free after my first take profit. Uh, and it's only going to increase my overall risk, like very small, like from like half a percent to like one and a half percent, depending on how you, you spin it. We're just using numbers for an example. Um, but like, let's just use like this example. So let's just say like we take a trade and like the price is like, 29,150. I'm a US 30 guy. So that's, that, that's the prices that I always deal with. Um, let's say my TP1 is at 29,100. Let's say my TP2 is at 29,000. Let's say my TP3 is at like 28,800. So my TP1 hits, um, I'll close that trade. Let's just say I make 2,500 bucks. Um, and I still have two more lots open. So assuming that the trade keeps running, Say let's just say it goes all the way down to twenty eight eight hundred and never retraces. I'd basically be making like an extra like seven thousand or five thousand um, dollars on top of what I've already closed for my first take profit, uh, just from like that extra lot size that I put in. So it's all about calculating risk. That's going to be number one. Is I mean obviously trading is calculated risk. So if you can increase your risk very very minimally and leave that room to have that much more reward is great. So like if you're only risking an extra thousand dollars. Um, for a potential $7,000 more reward, it definitely makes sense to do it. Um, so that's how I'm approaching things nowadays is I'm kind of just increasing my risk ever so slightly um, by adding on a couple more lots to my order size. And then I'm taking out what would be my full position size uh, at my first take profit. And then I let the rest just run to my final take profit risk free with my stop loss at even. Cool. And I'll trail it down as the trade progresses. But does that make sense? Or yeah, 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 so, uh, yeah, yeah. A little bit better. I don't know if that explanation was super clear. That's that's pretty clear. And, and I mean, the trail is is based on a key level or something else. Yeah, key levels and take profits. Most of my take profits are ma- are mainly on key levels. Um, so let's just say, like you know, we're a hundred pips in profit, and my st- I'll move my stop loss to like plus twenty pips. And then let's just say we go like two hundred pips in profit. I'll move my stop loss to like seventy five pips in profit, and so on and so forth. Uh, but it's all risk free. That's all extra in my head. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like I already yeah. took out, you know, my money for the day. Now I could just let the rest run and I'm good to go. And um, many people hold on to the bag and, and they they end up losing uh what they could have secured. So yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that's a big problem. So it's just removing greed is huge. So once you can kind of be happy with like, okay, like boom, I'm gonna make, you know, four grand today, five grand today with this position. I can take that out and whatever happens extra is just like a bonus. And then you can just use that to build upon it. Cause sometimes it will run. Sometimes it won't run. So it all depends. And and how much on the US 30 do you find it runs? How often? Um, I would say it, it usually always will come back like one, like maybe like a couple times. I would say probably has like a 60% chance of retracing to entry um, after it hits my first take profit recently. I think the, the market for US 30 has been super, super choppy lately. Um, a couple months ago we had, you know, big aggressive movements. I was catching like 300 pips a day. Um, and this was like for weeks, like it was just, I remember I took one month, I think I only had like two losses and I had like 15 wins. It was insane. Um, I think my, my win ratio that month is like 86%. We have a guy in our, in our group that maintains all of our win win and losses. He has a whole spreadsheet, um, for us, which is super helpful. But I had one month where I was just on fire. And then one month where I was expecting that 300 that was, those massive moves that two 300 pip move and the market would only give us like 80 to 100 and then it would retrace and then i would just be like oh well it didn't hit my my final tp yet so i'm going to be stubborn and then i would end up getting taken out at like a plus five or like a plus 10 wherever i put my stop 
Um, but it's all about being able to, you know, improvise, adapt, and overcome. So you have to just kind of implement um, new rules with new conditions. So nowadays, like the market's very choppy, or it likes to retrace. So once I get 50 pips, I'm going to pull that out. And then I'll leave those extra lots to run on my stop loss at break even. If it runs, it runs. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm still good for the day. Um, so it's all about, you know, just kind of adapting to what the market's doing. But I think right now the market's uh, a little bit choppier than it usually is. Last week, we started getting some big moves again. Um, but for the weeks before that, it was super choppy. We were kind of stuck in a range and it wasn't, it wasn't a lot of fun to trade. It was actually super frustrating for me. Um, but yeah, I think, a, a big part of dealing with, you know, irregular market conditions, um, obviously one is being able to adapt to new conditions. And, um, number two is not doubt is not to doubt your strategy. Um, because once you have an entry strategy that works, you just have to follow it because you have to understand that trading is a game of probabilities. So not everybody's going to have a 100% winning probability. I've yet to meet one person that does, and I've met a lot of people that trade. Um, but what you have to do is you just have to understand that there is going to be a losing probability in your strategy. And as long as that probability is going to win more than it's going to lose, you have to trust it no matter how many losses you take. Um, and if you can prove that it's an actual winning strategy, then you want to follow it. Obviously, if you're losing all the time and your strategy is a losing strategy, you got to find a new strategy. But once you find one that wins and you take a couple losses, you shouldn't be discouraged. You just follow that strategy, and it's going to win more than it loses as long as it actually does do that. Do you have a recommended book or resource that guys can go and check out? Um, yeah, so I actually wrote a free ebook uh, called Trading Survival Guide. You can get that on my website, imperialfx.net. Um, and then I would obviously recommend uh, Trading in the Zone. Great book. Um, I'm sure that one's been said on here one or two times. Uh, and then I'm about to dig into, um, about to dig into Momo traders. Um, I was a recommendation from a good friend of mine who trades stocks. He's actually a beast. Um, so I'm about to dig into that. Um, but yeah, I don't really read too many books on trading, believe it or not. Um, it's just been something that I just didn't, I don't really think I could learn like too much from a, like a book. Like I don't, for me, it's like for trading, it's like, I have to experience it. Um, or meet somebody that's doing something that I want to do. Um, books for me, I don't really gravitate towards trading books the most. Um, I read Hedge Fund Market Wizards and um, Trading in the Zone, obviously, going to dig into Momo Traders. And then there was another one by um, uh, a New Market Wizards by uh, Jack Schweiger as well. So I read both of those and Trading in the Zone, but I haven't read Momo Traders yet. So, I mean, I don't really uh, read too many trading-related books, but those ones have been great. Cool. Uh, I just found I found that a lot of those books are a bit outdated, um, and they're not really talking about things that are not really talking about the way that people trade nowadays. Hedge fund market wizards was a lot more recent and relevant, so that's why I really enjoyed it. Um, but for the most part, I wouldn't really seek books for trading education. Um, but they are good. They're, it's definitely good. The biggest thing for me that I've been able to pull from books is hearing from people that have you know survived you know, big drawdowns, survived blowing accounts, um, survived hot streaks, survived losing streaks. You know, that's like the biggest thing for me that I take away from books that I actually look for is just um, more people talking about like the, the mental part of it rather than anything else. Um, because I feel like that's the, the biggest thing that a lot of people need help with mm. is just, um, is just, is the mental side of things. So for me, that's, that's what I look for when I read a trading book is more mental takeaways than actual technical takeaways. Okay, and if you had to sum everything up here today, I mean, what's what's the one bit of advice you'd leave our listeners with? I would say remove what is subjective, do what works for you, and do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Cool, nice. Well, look, before we wrap up, what's the best way for the guys to get hold of you? Uh, so you can follow me on Instagram, uh, A-U-S-T-I-N-E-D-A-L. So that's Austin Ed Al. Um, and then Imperial FX Academy as well. And um, yeah, that's definitely the best way to get a hold of me is through Imperial FX. I send all of my trades every single day um, in a chat group there with full trade management as well. Um, we have a full academy with over 50 videos, five graded quizzes, fully interactive. Um, not a lot of people are doing that, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, so, you can, so through Imperial or through me directly, um, definitely the best way to reach me and um, keep in touch and stay up to date with everything that's going on over here. Superb, superb. Well, look, a big thank you to Austin for sharing with us today. Everything we've discussed here, along with all the links, are in the show notes. To find them, simply search for Austin in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, wish all my listeners training happiness and success. 
All right, folks, there you go. Interview with Austin, Dunn and Dustin. Now, if you do want to check out the video, as I mentioned at the start of the show, head over there, tradingnut.com. It'll be on a show notes page or hit the Trading Nut YouTube. Do be sure to subscribe because I'm doing a ton of stuff over there as well. So um, if you're just a podcast listener, go over there, check out the YouTube, subscribe on the YouTube because there is so much stuff that I'm putting out there now, such valuable content as well for you guys to sink your teeth into. You can treat it like a full-on educational course if you want. And Austin's video is just just up there with the rest of them so guys go and check that out uh, also do remember let me know if you do want to take part in a trading competition and we'll get that hooked up as well and we'll sort out some cool prizes and last but not least you, you if you're into thinking or thinking about even just thinking about uh, building a trading robot to help with your trading to semi-automate your trading to fully automate your trading then head over there tradingnut.com i have got my robot builders club there may be a special offer on go and check that out asap if you've got no idea about this stuff you want to sort of get a foot in the door find out what it's all about then take my free trading i've been doing this for years so take my free trading you're going to get a, a robot to run on your account it's currently done 50 percent on the account since we started it which was maybe six months ago, uh, maybe not even that. So guys, go and check that out all over there on tradingnut.com.